over the last months, frontier markets have performed 5% and the Vietnam index has reached 8%. So we've turned to Kevin Snowball of PXP Vietnam because he is probably the most experienced investor in Vietnam. Kevin, Thank you very welcome. Much. Certainly the oldest. <laughs> Certainly the oldest, right. So a bit, just a bit of background, let's get back a couple of years. What happened with that tremendous inflation that used to plague Vietnam and that commercial balance deficit? Yeah, well, the, the government had basically had a policy, a, a macroeconomic policy or monetary policy of growth above everything for about 15 years, which created these mini boom bust cycles, as you can see um, in the chart in the background. Um, essentially, two years ago, when the last time they devalued the currency, they moved to a platform of monetary policies des designed to stabilize the, um, the cycles. Um, and since that time, um, inflation's fallen fairly dramatically from 23% back in August 2012 um, to just under 6.4% now. Um, and that was achieved through um, essentially introducing a regime of high interest rates, which, which reduced credit growth and obviously um, credit growth, which had been something to the order of 35% in 2010 does have inflationary impacts. Um, at the same time with the, the um, the manufacturing uh, mix, if you like, improving dramatically so that we moved away from very low cost, very low value add uh, manufacturing of um, garments and footwear to a much better value added mix, including much more um, electronics and other technologies. So um, the trade deficit has last year had disappeared and um, in fact a small trade surplus for the first time since 1992. So the government are doing the right things and that's um, obviously increasing confidence in their ability to continue to do the right things. But this control, this inflation control has had a kind of side effect which is the increase of uh, non-performing loans. Yeah, I and mean, I, I think you know, as you increase interest rates dramatically, so it becomes more difficult for companies to uh, manage their cash flow, and so there was a surge in bankruptcies, and as bankruptcies increase, so non-performing loans are a consequence of that. Um, and but recently, the, uh, certainly over the last six months, the government have been looking at various ways in in which to. Um, address that problem in the creation of a, an asset management company or bad bank in um, the last uh, week or so um, will certainly enable the banks to start lending again, in which case we'll get some credit growth because there's been none year to date. And that will hopefully um, result in a pickup in GDP growth, which has slowed fairly dramatically over the last couple of years, again, as a consequence of, of, of the re removal of the, the stimulants of, of um, GDP growth, if you like is that there are rumours that uh, the government is uh, undervaluing the amount of uh, non-performing loans. Is that the case? Um, it's difficult to say at the moment. I mean, the, um, in the last six or eight months, the estimates of, of the extent of the problem have been um, pretty wild and ranged from 9% uh, of GDP to 20% of GDP. And until such time as the, these, these NPLs, non-performing loans, are quantified and published, it's very difficult to, um, it's very difficult to get a, a, a firm handle on it. But certainly as interest rates have been cut by about 7% over the last year, you would expect the, the extent of non-performing or the, the number of non-performing loans to, to reduce. But um, I, I think it's pretty clear that the capital of the banks overall has probably been wiped out by some pretty poor um, risk control over the last several years. So w with the performance that we've been observing on the index, 25% uh, nearly or, or even more since the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. is, there still, is there still some value in, in the Vietnam market and where is it? Um, yes, certainly. The, the, the market is still um, relatively cheap, I mean, against its regional peers and also against its historic trading ranges. Um, the increase or the, the, the move up this year has been the gradual realization that the government are doing the right things, which is creating more confidence in, in equities. Um, and overall, the index is on. Um, 
10 times um, 2013 earnings and probably under nine times 2000 and next, 2014 earnings. Um, and that compares very well with the historic trading average of, of between eight and 35 times. And if you look at Indonesia or the Philippines or, or, or um, Thailand, then they're on much higher multiples than Vietnam. Admittedly, they are emerging markets where Vietnam is only a frontier market, but um, so you would expect there to be some sort of discount, but um, there still seems to be plenty of upside. And where is this upside? Well, I think it's it's still possible to find um, cheap stocks. I mean, you know, the, the biggest listed company in Vietnam, which is our largest holding, is a, um, is a company called Vinamilk, which is the state dairy monopoly. Um, that's performed extremely well, I mean, particularly in terms of um, you know the amount of money that we've made through investing in that. And it's on 15 times earnings, which sounds expensive in comparison to the index. But this is a company that could continue to grow at a conservatively. Um, 20% bottom line for the next five years. So it's on 15 times this year's earnings, it's on 12 times next year's earnings, it's on you know, eight and a half times the, the year after that. So it's, you know, there, um, certainly there is um, value to be found outside of, um, you know, the, the, outside of the stocks that are the focus of the exchange traded funds, because there's been a lot of money coming into those which have distorted the valuations of the stocks which are, are held within those vehicles. But we have very little crossover with those holdings and we cover obviously see a lot more stocks than anybody else does so we're able to find essentially to be able to find value where nobody else is looking. Well Kevin thank you very much for being with us today. Pleasure. Thank you very much.